For the Peace Snowflake ornament, I'm using three out of the six strands of embroidery floss. I just split it down the middle and then tie a knot in one end and thread my needle on the other end. And I'm using a back stitch here first, so I make one little stitch and then skip a stitch length, come up through the fabric, and then back down in the hole of the last previous stitch. So you always skip a stitch length and then back down into the hole of the previous stitch until you get to the bottom. And then you're going to come up as close as you can to your last stitch. And we're going to turn this from a back stitch into a whipped back stitch. So this is the whipped part. You slide your needle under each stitch, going the same direction each time. I'm going right to left and pulling it and it will create this little twist effect and cover over any of those gaps between stitches. And then insert your needle back down in the same hole as your first stitch. Then you can do two small stitches here. Each arm or stem of the snowflake will be just like that. And then I work on this part between, again, doing a back stitch, and then we're gonna turn it into the whipped back stitch. It doesn't really matter which direction you go here. It's kind of like a puzzle. I kind of went in a weird direction at first. I'm not spatially talented. But once you get those all finished with the back stitch, this is how you tie off your thread if you're running low. So you take your needle under a close by stitch, create a loop, and then go through the stitch two times. And tug, and then snip that off. Now we're gonna whip this back stitch so we're sliding a thread under each of these back stitches. And every time you get to a crossing, go down through the fabric. This will create nice sharp angles and then come up on the other side of the arm here. If you don't do this, it will just create more of a rounded look than these sharp corners, which is what we're going for. So you'll just continue the whole way around doing your whipped back stitch until you get to the very end and then insert your needle down into the fabric and tie it off. Just make sure you're always working in the same direction, top to bottom, left to right, whichever. Now we're gonna take our metallic thread and if you make a little loop, just pinch your thread and make a little loop. It goes through the needle much easier this way instead of the end which frays. <laughs> and then you're gonna knot your ends together in this case. I don't usually do this, but it works a lot better for metallic thread. And then you're going to do the back stitch again the whole way across until you get to the end and then we're going to whip that as well so when we do the whipped back stitch it gives it a much smoother look you have those smooth lines and you can't see the cracks in between each stitch so that's what we're going for here and since we doubled over our metallic thread it gives a much thicker look to the silver line now once you've done two lines of those then we're going to take the dark gray charcoal thread and we're going to take two strands of that and again a back stitch <laughs> so you want to be very careful and precise use your smaller needle if you can for this part in the kit i include a tiny needle and that works a lot better when you're only using two strands or one strand like for the beads you can be a lot more precise when you're using the smaller needle and that's important here when we're outlining letters. The straight parts of these letters, you could probably do two or three stitches, but on the rounded portions like the P and the C, you wanna make sure that you do very small stitches around the rounded portions to be able to achieve that nice curve. And now we're gonna add some beads. So I'm using one strand of my white thread and my smallest needle Bring your needle up on one side of the arm, place your larger bead on your needle, and then insert your needle back down on the opposite side of the arm and pull it tight. Then we're going to do the same thing two more times so that we have a large bead in the middle of each of these three sections, and then you're gonna do the same on the other side. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the tiny beads 
in each of these spaces. So there will be four spaces here on the top we're trying to fill. I gave you a bunch of the little beads because some of them fit well on the needle and some don't. So just <laughs> try it till you get one that fits and that gives it such a pretty sparkle and then repeat on the bottom.